This is She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. Your host, Kinsey Roberts, interviews incredible women in the wedding industry who are making their mark and creating success on their terms. Join the conversation. Well, hey there and happy Tuesday. Welcome to episode 59 of She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. This is your host, Kinsey Roberts, and today it is my pleasure to welcome Sasha Abreu Jimenez to the show. Sasha is an award-winning certified wedding planner and owner of Oh So Classy Events located in Tampa, Florida. So beautiful. She founded the Oh So Classy Events Studio in 2012 to assist laid-back couples in accomplishing their fun and elegant wedding dreams and works alongside her team to create memorable wedding days for couples both near and far. Sasha is also an advocate of inspiring and empowering other business owners to accomplish their goals through balance and self-improvement and in 2015 began a small intimate group for other local planners to meet and encourage each other through their ups and downs to eliminate a formerly hostile and lonely area of the industry. Don't you love that? Outside of planning for her amazing couples, her other passions lie in mitigating a broad spectrum of business hurdles, as well as refining the entrepreneurial art of work-life balance for business owners. I absolutely love this conversation with Sasha. We really talk about what it means to kind of have work-life balance, but more than that, work-life integration. So how can we take our life and everything we do there and really integrate it with our business so that we do feel balanced? Because I, I do feel like balance is kind of elusive. It's a little bit of a unicorn. And rather, I would say, how can we bring the two together so that they work, you know, not always seamlessly, but this, so they work more seamlessly together. And the really tactical things you can do to implement in your life and business that make that happen easier. So without further ado, let's go to the show. Sasha, welcome to the show. Hi, welcome, Kenzie. Thank you. You are so welcome. I am very excited to have you here. As I was telling everyone in the pre-chat Uh, interview where I was giving your professional bio, I was telling him how we are going to be talking today about personal and professional boundaries and balance and communication. And so, you know, you and I were just kind of saying offline how we we feel like this is a huge topic right now and always as it should be because it's important to have those boundaries. But Mm -hmm. um, so I can't wait to get into the meat of this interview. But I would love for you, Sasha, in your own words to just briefly tell us who you are and how you currently serve the wedding industry. Absolutely. Yeah. My name is Sasha. I'm a wedding planner here in Tampa and I'm the owner of Oso Classy Events. Um, We focus on providing fun and intimate wedding planning experiences for our couples and we really just are very passionate in giving them that experience that sometimes people miss out on when they're super stressed out about their wedding and making it really intimate and personal. We actually, you know, become friends with a lot of our couples at the end of it all. So um, we just have a lot of fun with doing what we do. And so tell me the backstory about Oh So Classy Events, which is the name of your company. How did you get into being a planner and what has kind of been your evolution there? (laughs) Actually, it's um, a really funny story (laughs) to tell because most wedding planners, you know, start their business like after planning their own wedding. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I actually started it after planning my best friend's wedding um, in just three short weeks, actually. Oh, my gosh. Tell us. (laughs) Yeah. And I had never planned a wedding before or anything. Um, and she was like, you're my maid of honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. So let's plan. Um, so it was a lot of fun. And I was really like amazed at just all of the compliments that I got from her friends and family at the wedding. Um, and they were like, oh, so how long have you been like wedding planning? And I was like, I never done this before. <laughs> so uh, five that's... minutes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Even like the day of actually, I, I got like sick, like two days before the wedding. Oh, wow. And so on the day of, I was running like 103 fever or something. And like, I had no voice by the end of the night. It was like one of the best, most craziest days ever. Um, I'll never forget it for sure. But I know after that moment, you know, from the start of the day, like having my trunk packed to the brim and from to the end of the day, seeing their smiles and everything. It was just like so rewarding that feeling. Um, and with everybody like still even after the wedding asking me about it, I was like, maybe I should look into this. And mm-hmm. so I started looking into it and really seeing how could I get more educated about this and how could I um, really see if it was the right thing for me. Um, and then from there, I just started networking and that's it. You know, I just started doing it. I jumped right in, um, not having any idea what I was getting myself into. And I learned a lot along the way. 
And now years later, here I am engaged. So it's funny as a wedding planner to see like that bird's eye view from, you know, the bridal perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it's neat because a lot of people, even when I got engaged, they were like, oh, you weren't married already? Like, because they expect that from like every wedding planner. (laughs) Right. (laughs) <laughs> it was it was really neat, but that's how it all started. Yeah. So how did you get your first couple of clients besides your best friend? Um, well, actually, I did a bridal shows. Um, I did also a lot of like word of mouth, just people um, that would know of me and refer me mm-hmm. um, because of all that networking I did at the beginning. I feel like that was so huge. I mean, tell me about that. What kind of networking did you do? A lot. I mean, I went to like... Um, any kind of networking luncheons, anything that was community related, not just um, in the planning industry, but like I did um, anything that was women business owner related to um, just to kind of get out there and meet other people that were going through the same thing or had already been in business or, you know, even a year in because it kind of gave you the perspective of like, okay, there, there is like, you know, light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing. Yes. Um, And it was really neat to kind of have that encouragement as well, because none of my friends at the time, I was 22, none of my friends like owned businesses or anything. Like when I would talk to them about it, they'd be like, what are you, what do you mean business license? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. (laughs) So it wasn't like the most relatable thing. And having other people that were going through that was really great. And then that's how I slowly started meeting, you know, vendors in the industry and a lot of our, you know, photographer friends and just vendor friends that we work with a lot. Um, and they would, you know, uh, refer us. Um, we had a couple of venues refer us and then, um, bridal shows and things like that. So that's pretty much how initially I gained clients. And then as I got, you know, built a portfolio, then, you know, I would start getting some clients finding me on social media. Um, at the time, like Instagram was not really there yet. So Mm -hmm. Facebook was really huge. Um, and then from there it was just finding us, you know, on Google and things like that. Um, but at the beginning, a lot of it was word of mouth and I even worked with a florist for some time. Um, and I did all of her pretty much team management. So I would handle all of the timelines, all of the, um, anything that had to do with like managing our team and making sure everybody had a job to do. So that gave me a lot of experience in like vendor management too, and kind of just, managing a schedule and everybody's time. Um, and then a lot of times I would meet, um, you know, brides and grooms there that would be interested in having more than just the services she was providing. Um, and they would hire me on as their planner as well. Right. I love how you said at the beginning, and I'm sure you continue to do this, that you networked with people outside of our industry because they're, you know, everyone has weddings, everyone has events, not just right. other professionals. And so I really appreciate you saying that. I think sometimes we can get mired down in our industry and yeah. do a lot of networking within our industry and with vendors, which is great. But I think it's a real testament to how you were able to get a lot of, you know, those first initial clients by getting out there and really um, being a networker and a giver to so many different industries. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think it's so important to kind of be mindful of the fact that um, wedding industry businesses are not the only kind of business. (laughs) There's just obviously so many other forms of business. I mean, I just met so many different kinds of things from like a bike shop owner to, you know, whatever it was. And that really helped me to have the business owner mindset. Versus just like, oh my gosh, weddings, pretty, flowers, cake. Like, that's not all it was. You know, to grow my business, I needed to be aware of, like, accounting and, like, leads. And how do you do this whole website SEO thing? You know, so many things. Um, So having that, I think, really was a little bit more powerful because I had that extra kind of, like, ammunition to get myself going at the beginning. Yes. Um, So, yeah, it was definitely very helpful. And a lot of those vendors, like I still, you know, keep in touch now with now and they will, you know, always be checking in. And so it's kind of nice to see how their business has grown, even if it's somebody that's not in the industry. Um, And being able to kind of get that outsider feedback from somebody who isn't in the industry, because I feel like, you know, somebody who is in the industry, obviously, is going to have a little bit more um, positivity to certain things. Whereas, there's certain areas of your business you want just kind of more of a straightforward answer and kind of you want really raw feedback. And so you get that with 
those, you know, friends that are outside of that industry. Yes. Oh, I love that. Raw feedback. So true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and just for uh, clarification, will you tell everyone how long you've been a wedding planner, Sasha? I've been a wedding planner um, almost six years now. Mm -hmm. um, and I love it. Um, I love the couples that we work with. We, we are so blessed and lucky to have um, the clients we do. And not only that, but the vendors that we work with, it's just awesome because honestly, if it wasn't for them, like we wouldn't have amazing events, you know, we yeah. could only do so much. So, um, we're really happy that we have kind of that strong network. Um, and honestly, the most rewarding thing for me is like when a client refers another client, cause then it's like, okay, they really loved us, you know, and we did everything and anything we could have done for them. And, made it an awesome, memorable day for them. That's really our goal. So Yes, that's like the ultimate form of edification. Yes, absolutely. It's like, okay, I did it right. <laughs> yes. Well, and I wonder, and maybe maybe you don't know the exact numbers, and that's totally fine, but what would you say is your where you get the most clients? Would you say it's referral-based, whether that be from other clients or vendors, or would you say that people are now finding you online? Um, we definitely do get some referrals um, still to this day, but our biggest um, referral base is definitely Google. Um, we're actually on the first page of Google. At, we're usually like one or second on the first page of Google when you type in like Tampa Wedding Planner or Wedding Planner Tampa. Um, and I've uh, people actually ask me all the time, like, oh, how did, how did you do that? Like, what company did you use? And, and we didn't. I, I did that all from just research and knowledge and a lot of trial and error and some, you know, tear filled nights looking at like, how do I make this better? <laughs> you know, trying mm -hmm. to figure this out. And that was kind of like, the catalyst for me to really soak in all that information like a sponge and choose to do it myself. Because I mean, at the time when I was looking into it, I was looking into like SEO management, and it was like, crazy dollar amounts. And I was like, I can't afford this as a new business owner. And honestly, even now, it's just it's a lot to invest into at the time and um I just really got like really into SEO so um that's actually one of the things I offer to wedding industry creatives now um to kind of help them boost that online presence but yeah I would say 80 percent of our leads are from Google that is, is so incredible I feel like this is another podcast episode yeah <laughs> for sure <laughs> For well, sure. Yes. Okay. Let's, we could talk about SEO all day, but oh I love gosh, that you yeah. brought that up. Let's all just agree that SEO is still important. It is still um, very, um, a huge part and clearly, you know, 80% of Sasha's business. So um, if you don't know what SEO is, or if you haven't really implemented it, do a quick Google search, um, get some information on that. And also, I mean, Sasha just said she offers that kind of as a service. So if you've been interested in figuring out more about SEO and how it can benefit your wedding business, that's definitely something to look into. But yeah. let's kind of get into the meat today. And as I mentioned earlier, we're really chatting about kind of boundaries personally and professionally, so that we can not achieve balance, because I think that's a unicorn. Um, but I think that uh, so that we can really feel good about where we're spending our time when we're spending our time in that space. Exactly. And so I would love for you, Sasha, to give us kind of your high level overview of what boundaries personally and professionally mean to you. Yeah, no, to me, having balance um, signifies carving out a healthy and happy work life that complements your home life. I feel that anything in excess, even work, is bad, um, and everything in moderation is good. So especially for entrepreneurs and just our mental and physical well-being, that balance has to be there. Um, and so I'm very passionate about kind of chatting on this because a lot of people just get so caught up in, like, the hustle and hustle and hustle, and you see it everywhere. Like, it's just like, oh, you have to hustle to grow your business. And you do. You really do. But you also have to still take care of yourself and have to have that balance and have to know when to pull away so that you can really refocus and re just energize yourself for that next batch of, you know, awesomeness. So it's really important to have balance for sure. I love what you just said, carving out a healthy and happy work life that complements your home life. I think that is, I, I wrote that down. That's really powerful. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I, I agree. You can hustle and there are times when we have to, and I feel like that's so appropriate. Like you can't just, you don't get something for nothing, right? We do have to right. hustle, but we can also be smart about it. We don't just have to hustle to hustle. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I, sometimes mm. I think as business owners, we think if we are not working like all the time, we're just not growing. And when in fact, that's just not the truth. I mean, time away from our work just really does help us recharge. And it, just like any other activity, I mean, whether it, that would be a sport or, you know, a hobby, whatever it was, like you have to pull away and then come back to like see how can I make this better. So it, it's so important to just have that work life balance and to be aware that, um, you have to have just kind of a start and end point every day mm -hmm. for you to really truly feel like you're getting things done. Otherwise, you can go through like a whole month and feel like I didn't get anything accomplished when you actually did a lot, but you just didn't have like a clear um, start and end, you know, to yeah. every little snippet of that. I love that. Well, let's talk a little bit about that in detail. So let's start with um uh, wedding industry pros or creative professionals who've owned their business for some years, you know, two plus years, and maybe they don't have legit boundaries set up in their business. Can you give us some concrete examples of ways they could start implementing boundaries um, and some balance in their business today? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I would say set business hours, hands okay. down. Um, you'd be surprised a lot of um, creatives have business hours set like on their, you know, Google page and like on Facebook and stuff, but they don't actually abide by those hours, which is fine. But like, as long as you have your own work hours set, I think that is huge and so important. Um, you have to also like set off days, set any, you know, are you going to work on this holiday and that holiday? You know, what will be your actual plan for those days? And that'll be a game changer for sure for anyone um, to do that because you're now giving yourself a real clear cutout schedule of what and when you're working. And um, if you don't have that, you kind of just find yourself working 80 hours a week and you're like, oh, didn't know I was doing that. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's, so that's the what first else? thing. That's first. That's um, awesome. The, yes. The second thing I would say is set policies about whether you'll text clients. Are you oh. going to be adding them on social media? Are you not going to text clients? Are you going to add them on certain social media but not on others? Um, I, for example, um, believe it or not, don't text with my wedding clients. Um, for us, being that we work with the client long term through many, many months of planning, if I was to text with them, a lot of that information gets lost. Like if they text me at 10 o'clock at night and then I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, we could do that. And then the next day I could easily forget it or I could have to go back to it. And then if it was something from two weeks ago, you're like scrolling up to find it then, the, you know, the client is, is expecting that once they told you that information, you're going to do what you need to do, you know, with that information. And so I just feel like it's very easy to lose um, details in texting. And just for my type of work and what we do, it doesn't work. So we have like a no texting policy, unless it's something like, on you know, you have a meeting and they're running late, they could be like, oh, I'm running five minutes late, things like that, but not like discussing actual details that matter to their day. Um, have you found that 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 your brides have, or that your couples have been okay with that? Have you ever had any pushback on that? They have as long as the thing with clients is that as long as you explain to them the reason why like it's mm -hmm. not just like oh don't text us because we don't want to talk to you like it's not it's never that you know we we tell them like whatever you need like we have unlimited communication with our clients and we're like just we're literally an email away or a message away on our um, portal system so it's just we give them the accessibility that it's not that we're not accessible. It's just that for the sake of their events and the details of their events, we want to make sure that nothing gets lost in the cracks. And so, um, believe it or not, most of them are really okay with it. And it, once you explain that to them, they're like, yeah, that totally makes sense. I hate having to scroll up to find something that I was chatting about three weeks ago. So, um, they're usually pretty good about it and it doesn't work for every type of, field I would say like there's sometimes where it, texting is actually just a great option so just kind of knowing and being aware of what works for the process that you have and then saying okay this is what we're gonna, going to be okay with and what we're not going to be okay with and why so that you have a valid way to explain that to clients. Mm -hmm. I feel like confused clients are the ones who offer pushback. And you know what I mean? It's exactly. not because they don't agree with you. It's because they don't understand any consumer. Like confused consumers are when you have a problem. And yeah. so, as you just said, as long as you explain your reasoning and it's all very logical, then they will get behind that 100% as long as they understand what you're saying. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. And the same thing goes for social media. I mean, 
Um, I find that, for example, for photographers, like social media, like Facebook, let's talk about Facebook. That's really helpful because um, when they send like engagement photos, then that couple um, will tag them in the photo in their professional page, but also on their personal page. And that creates leads. Um, for us, like during the planning process, I personally don't add my clients on Facebook because I feel like it can add an unnecessary pressure of like, if you're on Facebook at like nine o'clock and then that client, let's say emailed you at 7 PM and you're going to get back to them the next day. So you feel like guilty or something for being on Facebook and you're like, Oh my gosh, they're going to see me on Facebook and think, why hasn't she responded to my email? When it's like not the case, probably most clients are like, it's okay, you're normal, you can have, you know, Facebook time. But um, I feel like for my mental awareness of it and to take that anxiety out of the picture, I don't add my clients on Facebook, but I will add them on like, you know, Instagram and everything like that. We'll obviously follow all of our clients and do that. Um, but I think, again, it just depends on what you do. Like for photographers, I think it's great. For us, I personally don't think it's so great, but after the wedding, I definitely add that client on because after that, we've already built a great relationship. Um, you know, they're happy with everything. And then that does eventually lead to leads later on where if a friend is like, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting married, they will tag us right in the comments of that status and say, oh, please uh, reach out to Sasha. You know, I worked with her and it was great. And then that is obviously helpful because you want those, you know, leads from, especially like we were talking about from those clients. Uh, that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. um, but just having just set boundaries on like what you're going to be okay with um, as a business owner to keep that like home and life, um, you know, home and work separate um, in your life. And um, then just drawing that out so you know and you're aware of it and then you can implement it with your clients. I think that that is such a good point. So it's not that any of these, if these are not the right fit for you, if you are like, I will text all day long, good for, exactly. that's great. As long as you have a policy around that and you know what to expect and so does your client, that is what really matters. So exactly. set the policy and like Sasha said, whatever is okay with you is great because it's your business. Just make sure you have mm -hmm. a policy around that so you and your couples understand what's going on. Yeah, because you have to give clients guidance if if they don't, if you don't tell them, this is okay, this is not, this is what we do, this is what we don't, et cetera, et cetera. Like, they won't know. They they need that guidance. And if they're confused, like you said, if they're confused, they're not happy. They don't like that feeling of, like, feeling lost or, like, am I missing something or was this not communicated? You know, whatever it is. So, you know, we communicate those policies, like, even before a client books us, like, way in the consultation phase like we explain to them how we communicate how much of it like we tell them we have unlimited communication we're totally accessible to you anytime but they know that when they send that message then they know when to even expect a response back mm, I'm yeah. wow I'm so glad you said that that's a great point so even in your consultations you're saying unlimited communication via email and this you know message center not text exactly, exactly. excellent what yeah. else can we do to um you know create those personal and professional boundaries? Um, well, first of all, I highly recommend that um, anyone and everyone under promise and over deliver. It's so important and it really makes such a difference. Like this is, I, I don't know how or why we miss out on this so much, but it's so important to always have that mentality because when you have that mentality, then you'll know um how you can implement your boundaries and make them effective. Um, be, like being realistic with yourself in regards to time and saying like, if, if you're going to get a proposal out by this time, or if you're going to re respond to an email in a certain amount of time, if you always, always under promise and over deliver, there's no, like, it's like fail proof because if you tell someone I'm going to get back to you within 24 hours and you get back to them between like, in 12 hours, everybody's happy. It's like, you're happy, you got it done sooner, they're happy because they got a response sooner. It's just the best, the best thing, I think. So when you have that mentality, it's really easy to kind of implement the, the boundaries to create that balance, but also keep everybody happy. So they don't feel like they're being set aside or anything because every single one of those clients and vendors even that you work with are important to what your end goal is. Um, and I think really that applies to even people outside of the industry, but especially mm -hmm. for us being so service-based and being so um, 
customer service oriented, we have to be aware of like what what the expectations we're setting and that we're over delivering on those expectations. Mm, mm. So simple, but very significant. That's excellent. Yes. Okay, so these what I'm hearing you saying these three kind of these tips that we've gone over are set business hours. And these are not just your weekly business hours. But these are also, are you going to take any holidays off? Are you going to have any just general days off? Do you have any vacation time? What are some personal things that happen? Like if you have your kids soccer game every single week, block that off in your calendar. And so you just know that that's happening. So that was tip number one. Tip number two is set policies, including but not limited to social media. Are you going to be friends or follow your couples online before, during, or after they're your client? Do you allow your clients to text with you, to, excuse me, to text with you? And of course, your business hours fit into that too. Tip number one kind of rolls right into tip number two. What are your business hour policies? When can they expect to hear from you? Which takes us into tip number three, under promise, over deliver. If something is going to be delivered in 24 hours, maybe you can get it delivered in 12 to 18 hours. And as yeah. Sasha said, it can help everyone be happy. They feel like they got something, you know, quicker than you said. And you feel like, hey, that's off my chest. That's already done. I can move on to the next thing. Yes. Is, are those your top three things that we can do today? Or do you have some more for us, Sasha? I have some more. Great. I actually want to make sure that I mention these because it's so effective and it helps so much. Um, the first thing um, is, that's really helpful is that once you've set those business hours, make sure that those are in your signature line so that when you're writing those emails, vendors and clients and anybody and everybody knows when to expect responses when you are in the office or when you're not. And then um, another thing that can help is setting an automatic responder on your email if it's something that you know, like a specifically busy time of the year. Um Right now, you know, with engagement season, um, having just finished and all these leads may be rolling in, like having an automatic responder where someone at least gets that initial response that says, like, I am going to be in touch with you right away. We are a little bit busy on this end, but, you know, your email matters to us. Mm -hmm. That is so important because um, even though it's automated, people do appreciate it. Like, they're like, oh, okay, at least I know when he or she is getting back with me. Um, so definitely implementing that is so, so, so important. And, um, you know, having processes, just being really clear with your clients, being really clear with what your steps are, how it will be to work with you, um, you know, having even like maybe a little welcome guide with those expectations and those policies listed in place. And also using like client questionnaires, because then you can gather a lot of that information. And then your communication just becomes so much better. Because instead of going through these same repetitive questions with clients, you can just put it into one little form, they can have it and then you're communicating on those items, but it, it is saving them just so much time and stress. Um, so all those things I think are really great to kind of upplay your communication and really make it something that is helping your business rather than hurting your business. Mm. Um, I love that. And, and Sasha has an excellent autoresponder. Her and I have emailed back and forth for this interview, of course, and her autoresponder is very clear and it's effective and I love it. So thanks for mentioning that. Yes. Yeah. And like, you know, make it friendly too. It doesn't have yes. to be like, we are not here. You know, it's not yes. robotic. It's like, make it just friendly and you. So people already even get that gist of you if it's their first time emailing you. Um, I think it just is really helpful to kind of set yourself apart from the other person that may not be getting back to them. And I think that alone, a lot of times has sealed the deal for us. Like when we've had brides and grooms come in and they're like, oh yeah, you know, we reached out to three other people, but like nobody responded or they took like a week to respond. Like, and they're like, and you know, you guys right away sent an email to us letting us know when you'd get in touch with us. So even though we weren't actually responding back yet to them, that was a response. So it was, you know, the, de you know, sealed the deal for them to say, you know, I know you're going to communicate with me appropriately. So that's, it really sets you apart. I feel like this is a great segue into one of my next questions, which is about communication. And I think you and I agree that communication, especially with our clients and couples and each other goes hand in hand with boundaries and, you know, having a really streamlined business. So would you tell me, I mean, I'm sure, you know, this is one of the ways like getting back to people right away, but can you kind of right. tell us three practical and tactical ways that we can communicate effectively in our business? For sure. Like I said, with the welcome guides, it's so 
awesome to have one of those, even if it's just like a one sheet thing, Mm -hmm. just whatever it is that you feel will make you feel better to reiterate whatever it was you had already mentioned to them in the consultation, plus any additional items um, so that they know from the get go, like what your policies are, what the expectations are, what the process will be, what the next steps are going to be, what the end result should be, you know, all those things. And when you do that, it really gives you that power to say, okay, I listed it all out there for them so that they're not lost. And clients appreciate that so much because again, nobody wants to be confused. Like, you know, just put yourself basically in their shoes and be like, what would I want to know if I was working with me? Like, what are things that are probably coming up a lot with your current clients or previous clients that you find yourself constantly answering? Maybe that's something that, you know, can go in there. Um, And then again, the second thing is having clear processes. Like if you're going to make a welcome guide, then you probably need a clear process to put in that welcome guide so that they understand what it is that is going to happen next and then what's happening after that and so on and so forth. Um, It doesn't have to be like your one through 100 process, but just kind of breaking it up in maybe sections or just kind of giving them an overview summary of what that is so they know what to expect and they have those expectations and Again, because we're under promising over delivering, like mention the times maybe in windows so that they know that sometime in that window you're going to do X, Y, Z. And then they know because everybody's timeline is a little different. And like for us, for example, if we have a client that's um, going to be planning a wedding in three months versus a client who's going to be planning a wedding in 12 months, you know, that time frame is different. So we kind of let them know windows rather than exact timing because it just works out differently. And also depending on the time of year, like if it's the holidays or something like that. So having that is super important. Um, and then again, the third thing is with those client questionnaires, if you find that you, there's a lot of questions that you keep avoiding asking or like that you keep having to ask clients over and over again, and you keep having to repeat yourself or, just that you feel like it's information that you always need for whatever type of project you're working on, like put those in a questionnaire. So you know that you literally are not letting anything slip between the cracks. Um, It keeps you organized. It keeps the client happy because they feel like, okay, I got everything off my chest that I needed to make sure they have this information on and we're good to go. And then they feel like they are doing their part to make sure that that project is a success, whatever it is. Um, so having those client questionnaires, I think is helpful in that sense because it keeps you just organized and it makes, starts building really a routine with your clients on what information you you need to gather from them. Uh, and that leads to awesome communication because then you are going to actually have what you need to then communicate on the little details. Um, it's like getting the big picture will help you then work on the tiny details in that picture to make sure everything is perfect for that client experience that you're building on. And when you say questionnaire, just to confirm, do you mean if you get if a lot, you are asking clients the same question over and over again, do you mean outlining a questionnaire, like using a tool like Google forms or, um, type form and sending that to your client so you can get all of their personalized answers? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, to make sure that you know exactly specifically to them what those details are, because okay. obviously everybody's different. Um, and in this industry, no matter how many little traditional things there are about, you know, weddings and just events, there is still kind of that, um, that uniqueness to every client that you want to make sure you capture. Um, and that you're aware of things. You'd be surprised how many things you may may just not be aware of because it just never came up as a question or you never asked your client. And then them sharing that little snippet with you, you're like, oh, wow, that makes sense. Or if maybe they're like, I don't really enjoy like email. It's not my thing. I love phone calls. Then, you know, like for that client, you may be able to just knock something out like on a five minute phone call with them and they just feel like it's more productive for them and it's more productive for you. So You know, just being aware of whatever it is that comes up a lot to make sure that you're from the from the get go capturing what those preferences are and what those details are for that client. Mm, Yeah, I love that. So simple is figuring out if someone hates email and then you can always be their favorite vendor. (laughs) 
Exactly, exactly. Well, you have covered so many incredible communication tips today. I cannot thank you enough, but I have a question. So you you just sound like you are, I'm sure you're always tweaking and improving, but it just sounds yeah. like you have a lot of great processes in place. And I would love to know what tools you're using to really manage your business, manage these communications and your other projects. Absolutely. My top five, top five tools. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, um, the first one would be Calendly, um, and that's C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y for those who have never heard of it. Calendly is awesome as far as, um, managing meetings and kind of getting, uh, a good way to manage scheduling. It's amazing. Uh, a lot of times you having to do that back and forth with clients on, are you available Monday at 12? Oh no, I'm not. I have a doctor's appointment. What about Tuesday? And then you're going back and forth. And before you know it, it's been like four days and you're still trying to figure out what time you're going to meet. Um, so with Calendly, you just send them that link and they can just hop on there and choose the time and date that works well within the times and dates that you have implemented. So it's like, it's amazing. It's so good. Um, my second thing is Asana. Um, we use that a lot for internal project management. Um, and that's basically like just a uh, project management um, website, um, Mm -hmm. really helpful for like managing different projects that are going on and different things. Um, our third one, if you have like a team in your, um, in your business, um, I highly recommend Slack, um, for like team optimization to kind of manage different lines of communication. Um, they have like what they call channels and it's really great to just be able to hop on there and speak to your team on specifically that one channel and, you have a way to separate things without having to add more, more and more email to your inbox. Um, And the fourth one I love is Google suite for business. Of course Um, we use Gmail, Google docs, Google drive sheets. I mean, pretty much anything and everything you name it calendar, of course. Um, Mm -hmm. So uh, I always say like it's five bucks or something like a month per account. Like it's so worth it. So worth it. So, and Google's um, suite of tools will, you can use your Google Calendar and um, connect it to your Calendly. Exactly. Love. Exactly. You link it right there and, they, and it already knows when you're not available within the windows that you already set that you were available. Yeah. So it's it's just like, I mean, whoever created Calendly, like, thank you. <laughs> and <laughs> it's really just a game changer. So you really will just avoid so many headaches. And clients feel better because they feel like they're choosing the time, not being dictated by like, Oh, what about this time on this day? Um, Even though you are technically dictating it because you're saying this day within this time, but then they're choosing whatever time during that window. So it's like, it makes them feel good that they're not having to, you know, settle for like a time that maybe didn't work a hundred percent, but they're just wanting to get the meeting, you know, taken care of. Yes. Um, So it's really helpful. And then the last thing is QuickBooks online for anyone who is just like, what do I do with this stuff? I just don't even know. Um, there's so many awesome, helpful um, videos that you can watch. There's also great people out there that handle this stuff. Um, so you can even en- enlist the help of a professional. I always highly recommend um, outsourcing when you can, if it's doable for you. Um, but QuickBooks Online really helps you in tracking your finances, and we love it. So that's my fifth tool. Ooh, but yes. Yeah. Love. These are all so amazing. Yes. <laughs> I, I wonder, love them all. Seriously, I know. You're like, top five. Right? Let me just list them out for you. And everyone, yeah. as you know, I will put all of the, all of everything that Sasha has mentioned today, I will make sure to toss in the show notes. So that way you can just tap your podcast player and um, grab her suggestions and look them up and see what she'll, and see what you love and that you can implement in your business. I also use, cal- I also use almost all of these in some shape or another, yeah. except for QuickBooks. I don't use that. Um, and they are awesome, but I've heard excellent things about QuickBooks too. So yeah, thank you yeah. for sharing all of these. It makes tax time really easy at oh, the yeah. end of the year when you're like, what am I doing <laughs> with QuickBooks? You get to the end of that year and you're like, I love QuickBooks. And then you just feel way better. Um, and really any kind of financial management tool helps better than nothing at all. So um, just having something in place is really helpful. Oh, I love that you said that. Any financial management tool is better than zero financial management tools. <laughs> exactly. So exactly. good. Well, Sasha, this has been such a fun interview. I have taken yes. pages of notes and <laughs> I would love to know, tell me what's on the horizon for you and Oh So Classy events this year in 2017. 
Well, right now, after five, over, over, oh my gosh, over five years of official business, That's we right. are rebranding. So I'm so excited. Wow, um, congratulations. It, thank you. Thank you. It has been a long time coming. We, we've been waiting for the right moment to do this, but mm -hmm. um, I'm so excited. It is coming along so, so fantastically, and I can't wait to, you know, reveal that. So I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then also this summer, um, I'm going to be working with three to five creative business owners um, anywhere in the country to mentor them on, you know, effectively managing their business while also managing clients. Because I think sometimes as vendors and as creatives, we're just really good at one thing and not so good at the other thing because mm -hmm. we only have enough time to practice on one of those things. So um, I decided, you know, why not offer one-on-one -on -one creative and entrepreneurial wisdom to these um, awesome, awesome talented people that may just be struggling in that area to kind of manage their business and make sure that everything is functional. So I'm going to be offering that this summer. Um, so for anyone interested in that, feel free to reach out. I'm mentoring at osoclassy.com. And uh, yeah, we're just really excited at all the things that we have planned this year. We have some fantastic clients that we're working with, um, amazing couples to work with, honestly, and some great events on the horizon. So I'm really, 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 really ecstatic. <laughs> you have an amazing, busy, fabulous year ahead of you. I cannot yes. wait to see it all. <laughs> hey, just to, just so I make sure I wrote it down right, your email address, if people are interested in a mentor session this summer, is mentoring at osoclassy.com. Yep, you got right. it. All right. Well, Sasha, I could not thank you enough for coming on today. It was truly my pleasure to have you here. And I really appreciate you taking the time. Oh, it was an honor to be on. Thank you so, so much. And I hope that all these little tools and little nuggets of information are helpful for everybody. Um, don't fret. You know, it's just important to have those, those things in place and it'll make such a big difference. So thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. You are quite welcome. We'll talk to you later. Bye, Sasha. Alrighty. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to She Creates Business. Please take a minute and head to iTunes to leave an honest review so we can help more wedding pros find the show.